After Apple Picking My long two-pointed ladders sticking through a tree toward heaven still, and there's a barrel that I didn't fill beside it, and there may be two or three apples I didn't pick upon some bough. But I am done with apple picking now. Essence of winter sleep is on the night, the scent of apples. I am drowsing off. I cannot rub the strangeness from my sight I got from looking through a pane of glass I skimmed this morning from the drinking trough and held against the world of hoary grass. It melted and I let it fall and break, but I was well upon my way to sleep before it fell, and I could tell what form my dreaming was about to take. Magnified apples appear and disappear, stem end and blossom end, and every fleck of russet showing clear, my instep arch not only keeps the ache, it keeps the pressure of a ladder round. I feel the ladder sway as the boughs bend, and I keep hearing from the cellar bin the rumbling sound of load on load of apples coming in. For I have had too much of apple picking. I am overtired of the great harvest I myself desired. There were ten thousand thousand fruit to touch, cherish in hand, lift down, and not let fall for all that struck the earth, no matter if not bruised or spiked with stubble, went surely to the cider apple heap as of no worth. One can see what will trouble the sleep of mine, whatever sleep it is. Were he not gone, the woodchuck could say whether it's like his long sleep, as I describe its coming on, or just some human sleep. The Road Not Taken Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler, long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that the passing there had worn them really about the same and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. The Sound of Trees I wonder about the trees. Why do we wish to bear forever the noise of these more than another noise so close to our dwelling place? We suffer them by the day, till we lose all measure of pace and fixity in our joys and acquire a listening air. They are that that talks of going but never gets away, and that talks no less for knowing as it grows wiser and older that now it means to stay. My feet tug at the floor, and my head sways to my shoulder, sometimes when I watch trees sway from the window or the door. I shall set forth for somewhere. I shall make the reckless choice some day when they are in voice and tossing so as to scare the white clouds over them on. I shall have less to say, but I shall be gone. My November Guest My sorrow, when she's here with me, thinks these dark days of autumn rain are beautiful as days can be. She loves the bare, the withered tree, she walks the sodden pasture lane. Her pleasure will not let me stay. She talks and I am fain to list. She's glad the birds are gone away. She's glad her simple worsted gray is silver now with clinging mist. The desolate, deserted trees, the faded earth, the heavy sky, the beauties she so truly sees, she thinks I have no eye for these, and vexes me for reason why. Not yesterday I learned to know the love of bare November days, before the coming of the snow, but it were vain to tell her so, and they are better for her praise. Bond and free. Love has earth to which she clings with hills and circling arms about, wall within wall to shut fear out. But thought has need of no such things, 
for thought has a pair of dauntless wings. On snow and sand and turf I see where love has left a printed trace with straining in the world's embrace, and such is love and glad to be, but thought has shaken his ankles free. Thought cleaves the interstellar gloom and sits in Sirius's disk all night, till day makes him retrace his flight with smell of burning on every plume, back past the sun to an earthly room. His gains in heaven are what they are, yet some say love by being thrall, and simply staying possesses all, and several beauty that thought fares far to find fused in another star. Reluctance Out through the fields and the woods, and over the walls I have wended, I have climbed the hills of view, and looked at the world, and descended. I have come by the highway home, and lo, it is ended. The leaves are all dead on the ground, save those that the oak is keeping, to ravel them one by one, and let them go scraping and creeping, out over the crusted snow, where others are sleeping. And the dead leaves lie huddled and still, no longer blown hither and thither. The last lone aster is gone, the flowers of the witch hazel wither. The heart is still aching to seek, but the feet question whither. Ah, when to the heart of man was it ever less than a treason, to go with the drift of things, to yield with a grace to reason, and bow and accept the end of a love or a season. Into my own. One of my wishes is that those dark trees, so old and firm they scarcely show the breeze, were not, as twere, the merest mask of gloom, but stretched away unto the edge of doom. I should not be withheld but that some day, into their vastness I should steal away, fearless of ever finding open land or highway where the slow wheel pours the sand. I do not see why I should ever turn back, or those should not set forth upon my track to overtake me, who should miss me here, and long to know if still I held them dear. They would not find me changed from him they knew, only more sure of all I thought was true. <laughs>